Hello and welcome back to Before He Spoke. So, um, today I want to do a video to take you through uh, my first thoughts on the Apple iPhone X. Um, had this now for uh, the weekend, pretty much, so today's Monday, um, and if you've seen the unboxing vid, then pick this up on launch day, which is Friday. Um, so, I want to bring some thoughts on it. A little bit sooner than planned, uh, reasons why will become clear. But um, let's kick off with the um, with the positives. So, iPhone 10, um, heard a lot about it, no doubt. I upgraded uh, to this from my 7 Plus, which you've got here. So, the first thing that is apparent about these two phones is the difference in size. So, to be honest, as I said in the other video, I found this a bit bulky and I found it to be too big, really, to be honest, day to day. Um, and so it was great to be able to go to this phone because um, they have a very similar screen size, um, in fact, maybe almost the same screen size, um, because this doesn't have the bezels, doesn't have the, um, the home button and all of that. So it was great to go to a more normal size phone, uh, but still be able to maintain the same sort of uh, screen real estate. That was really positive. Um, also, this has got the uh, face uh, face ID on it, so um, you you know you can just look at the phone. As you look at the phone, you swipe up, uh, then it unlocks, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you can see it working there, but see that is locked. And then if I look at the phone, that's now unlocked. And you can swipe up from there, and that gives you access to your phone. So that's cool, that's pretty good, um, very exciting. Um, and uh, that is that works you know, in 3D, so it does seem to be pretty secure. Um, and you'll see lots of videos on YouTube, people trying to fool it, uh, and it seems to be pretty, um, pretty good so far. And that has replaced the old fingerprint scanner, which obviously that means you use Face ID for accessing certain app logins, Means you use it for the uh, for Apple Pay now and things like that. So uh, that's quite cool as well. Um, but to be honest, that's oh the camera. The camera's pretty good as well. Uh, camera's an improvement on this one, and also the front-facing camera uh, is a big improvement as well. So that's great. You also get in the um, portrait mode now. You get uh, front-facing. Uh, yeah, front front facing portrait. Turn that around. So you get this kind of like you get these options here: natural light, studio light, etc. Contour light, if you can see that stage light, and those kind of things. So you can take those kind of photos. But to be honest, you get that in the iPhone 8 as well, which looks like that. Which is kind of cool, but you get that you get that in the iPhone 8. That's not unique to this. So, um, in terms of performance, very very similar as well to the iPhone 8. Um, and I guess that's really then when we start to talk about um, the not so good things. So, on balance, really, when it comes down to it, bear in mind that this phone is about 300 pound premium over the iPhone 8. Uh, and in terms of spec, uh, you know, the performance of the phone, processor, speed, what you're actually going to see um, and feel when you use the phone, they're pretty much the same uh, as far as I know. Uh, the differences you're getting with this is the face ID that we talked about and, um, and I think, yeah, the improved, slightly improved camera. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. And so the other thing is that this to me just feels like the phone that the iPhone 8 should have been and really the iPhone 8 is the incremental step up from the iPhone 7 so it's effectively like the iPhone 7s and then this is the the iPhone 8 really but these were uh, announced back in September and you know we're waiting until November the 3rd to get hold of these um, and as you've heard a lot they're very very expensive and really it just comes down to um, having owned it for the weekend and used it I like it but it's, it really is just another iPhone. It's not, there's nothing 
nothing stands out to me, nothing is particularly exciting anymore. You've got the an emoji things where you can, you know, make your face uh, an emoji face. Um, I'm not going to send those to people. Um, face ID, to be honest, I've never really been in a situation where I haven't been able to use my thumbprint to unlock my phone or pay for things. Um, and so they really just comes down to the screen. And whilst I won't want to necessarily go back to carrying something this size, um, you know, I can probably cope with uh, an inch less screen size, especially when you take into account the notch. Um, the notch has been talked about a lot, but it really is important because um, a lot of the apps haven't been optimized yet. Um, and so when they're not optimized, you just get sort of letterboxing at the top and bottom and the app just fills the space, the main space of the screen. Apps like YouTube have been optimized now, so you can actually turn it on the side and you can pinch to zoom to full screen the video, but then you get this notch coming out of the, um, coming out of the side of the video. Let's see whether or not I can... Uh, so this is also a slight problem. Sometimes face unlock doesn't, face ID doesn't work. Um, that well and you have to type your passcode in which is annoying um, but just let me see if I can get to um, YouTube video um, the other thing is because there's no home button there's a lot of gesture controls and things like that that you've got to learn so you now swipe up um, from the bottom instead of and, and you swipe up to, to go to the home menu um, you have to swipe down from the bottom right to get this, um, the kind of notifications, not sorry, the notifications, the control center, but that is just lifted straight from, uh, straight from, you know, the other iPhones, uh, nothing different. They can even see it's the status bar still on the top there, like it would be normally. Um, and so just things like that just feel a bit lazy. Uh, it's not particularly well polished, um, for Apple and, um, also, really important things like you can't, um, you no longer have the battery percentage shown on the battery because this, there's no space in the little nooks next to the notch. Um, I guess that's what we'll call them. So you don't get your battery percentage on there anymore, which I used to find quite useful. Um, you don't get um, a lot of this stuff that used to be across the top there. Uh, do not disturb. So when the phone's in do not disturb mode, it doesn't tell you anywhere on the screen anymore. Hopefully that'll change in future updates. Um, but yeah, there's just little things like that that are just a bit annoying. And when you, ultimately, when you get down to the fact that you've paid a 300 pound premium for this phone and you're thinking, what have I actually got for that? You've got the ability to unlock it with your face um, and you've got the bigger screen in the smaller size handset. Uh, oh, and you've got wireless charging as well, actually, sorry. Oh, no, wait a minute, that is also on the 8, so that's not over the 8. So, you know, it, it just, when you start to think about it, you think, um, I'm not sure I've actually got all that much for the £300. Certainly not anything that I feel is invaluable. Um, and so, probably have to conclude uh, that it's probably not really worth it, unfortunately. Um, here's an example of what I was talking about. So YouTube is optimised. So you can pinch to zoom that video. Hopefully you can see it there. But so consequently you then get the notch here coming out. So not great. So overall, to be honest, this is going to go. Um, which is a shame because I've always been a big fan of Apple, but just more and more recently, um, I just feel like the Apple products that are coming out are just incremental updates. There's no innovation really going on. There's certainly no revolution going on. Um, and that's a shame because you used to be able to rely on Apple um, to know that they were going to release something and you get it. You know, a lot of the time you'd be like, oh, I'm not sure about that. And then you'd use it, you try it and you go, do you know what, actually that works. But this is not it. Um, doing stuff with my face instead of my thumb, that's, I don't know. To me, that's not a big deal. So, anyway, it's a shame, but iPhone 10, not for me. That's gone. So, what's next? 
the Pixel 2. Now, this uh, came out quite recently, the Pixel 2. This is a standard size Pixel 2. Um, and I have picked this up and I'm going to give this a go. Bit of a change, going to Android, uh, and we'll see how, uh, see how it works out. But pretty impressed with this phone um, to look at it. Uh, the XL is not out quite yet. The XL has the different panel in it. It's got an LG panel, I think, in it, rather than a Samsung made panel. Um, but, uh, and it is very nice, very impressive, but it's not out yet. So, picked up the uh, Pixel 2. I'm going to give this a try. So, I will do an unboxing video on this, uh, and I will also um, then do uh, sort of more in depth reviews and thoughts on it. So, that's it. That's all from me for now. Thank you very much for watching. As always, uh, please click to subscribe. Please give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, give us a share and also go over to uh, Instagram and Twitter and follow us there at Before He Spoke. Thank you very much. That's all from me. See you soon. Good night.